Hi everyone, I am Dr. Pravin Gupta. In this video, we'll talk about a big debate. The debate is on MDMS versus DNA. This debate is not a new one. Ever since that there was a PG exam, students have been confused what to opt for. So this video I have made completely based on some facts, not on my personal experience or personal thoughts, but surely I'll put them at the last of the video. I request you to watch a complete video so that you get to know what is the main difference between those of both those two. So let's start it. Number one, as the results comes out, it is always important to get the best seat of your choice. And that seat should not only reflect what your thought process is, it should also reflect your working inclinations. Some students like surgical bands, some students want medical bands, and some would like to get a paraclinical or preclinical subjects. Well, it all depends upon what your rank is, isn't it? Let's be very frank about it. So if you get a rank of something very great, you always tend to think about radiology. You think about medicine. If you get a moderate amount of rank, you start to thinking, okay, can I do this? Can I do that? And that is when you get confused. Okay, should I go for DNB or MDMS is the only thing that you can take for. So comes a good idea. Deco, what is MD or MS? MDMS being done in a government medical college or in private institutions is actually a MCA or a N you can say nowadays it's NMC regulated series. So in this, you get a three years of complete programship in which you are attending a regular classes, yes, regular classes in the terms of uh, the seminars, there is a journal clubs and there's a lot of rounds there. Along with that, in most of the institutes like in Ames or the top prior institutes, you always get to write an exam after every six months and that exam is written exam. Then what happens is while you're working for the three years in your uh, MD curriculum or MS curriculum, the professor, they keep on seeing how much you are inclined towards the work. What is your dedication towards the work? And he gets a basic idea. Okay, he is good or she is good or she is bad or he is bad. Bad means you are not completely dedicated to your work. Well, this bad process takes a lot of lot of toll when you actually appear on the main exam after three years. The main three years exam is the exam you actually appear in your own institute, in your own department with one or maybe two or maybe in case of three external examiners. So what happens is your HOD is always with you and he is there to support you. Well, this is about the exam. So can we have a same comparison for DNB? Well, do you know how does a DNB exam is conducted? A DNB exam is completely, completely OSCE based. What is OSCE based? It has different stations and every station has a closed, closed case, which even the examiner doesn't know. And where is the exam? Well, you don't know, we don't know, nobody knows. Actually, this exam is in a foreign center and nobody knows who you are, what you have read, what you have, how you have worked. Nobody knows that. That means the exam is pretty tough, but it's not to worry because for that exam comes the main thing of my video. For that exam, you study, study and study throughout the three years because you are in a pressure. You know that, yes, I have to study only then I can get a DNB degree after three years. So what happens in the DNB degree is there are exams, OSCE based exam and every so-called OSCE stations have a limited amount of questions. That amount of question has every defined uh, marks, like for example, 10 marks, 5 marks, 5 marks, 5, 10 marks, completing to 100 marks in most of the DNB exams. Along with that, you have a practical cl uh, clinical set and is being judged by someone who is not a professor and someone who hasn't seen you. So it's a good thing, it's a bad thing. Why a good thing? Because in case you have not worked in your uh, DNB throughout the three years, Still, you can get it. The bad thing is, if you have not studied, you'll never get it. So, therefore, the DNB passing rate is not very good. And I will say, was not very good till a few years back. But since that time, the DNB exam is being taken up. The, the DNB course has been taken up by good students. The passing rate has marvelously, marvelously increased. Well, this is about the exams. Second, sir, please tell us about the way the DNB, DNB course is conducted. So, DNB course is conducted in three areas. Number one, those institutes which are neither MCI recognized, but they're good hospitals, but not a major one. Some of them, like the Gangaram, they are a big hospitals, but they are not exactly a medical college, but they are a good hospital private institutes, which are the best recognized in our country. Third one is obviously a medical college, which offers a MDMS. Along with that, they also offer a DNB course. So the three areas. Now, among these three, if you're doing it from a hospital, which is not a big one, or it is supposedly a uh, non mc recognized then you have to think on that why because the you know what happens is if there's not mc recognized the professors that is who are actually there i'll not say professor the clinicians who are actually there they are morally inclined they're mostly inclined towards a private practice only 
so that means your uh, your practice in that uh, hospital bit you know it actually gets affected but suppose you do it in a big uh, hospitals like uh, gangaram or so called that will really really help you and in fact will help you better than mdms let me tell you why because when you do it from a big hospital you have all those big big new equipments which you can work it believe me those equipments maybe are in a good institutes or a premier institutes of the country but are not there in the state medical colleges so when you work with those uh, instruments you when you go out and you practice in a private institutes or practice hospital in a private hospital you are obviously obviously ahead of your peers so working with a good hospital as a dnv degree will really really be working towards you for you because it will help you to look for the new cases good cases it will help you to use new instruments and robotic instruments is possible in a surgical branch but then comes a mdms with a dnb in a medical college well it's a most safest option to attend you it's safest option because yes the professorship uh, that i'll tell you later on it what is the basic changes in the mca or the nmc curriculum uh, actually not curriculum you should say the rules and regulations required for getting a assistant professor job in any medical college that actually differs with this third one however let's now come to the fees doing an md ms in a private institute will cost you lakhs and lakhs of rupees maybe you can go to 50 lakhs or can go to 1 cr if you know actually about it. it's very very expensive but if you are from a medical class a middle class family like yeah, actually i am so i would actually have gone for a dnb if i would not have got a md or ms of my own choice in a government medical college i would have not gone a private institute because i couldn't afford it the choice is yours the point is that doing a md ms from a private institute will really really be very expensive but if you can afford it it's your wish if you can't afford it you don't even think about it let's think about the dnb degrees being offered by the good hospitals the big hospitals and also by medical colleges if possible try to a bit you know ignore the small hospitals because the teaching will not be very good and the 3 years later on you might be a bit affected so what you're seeing is when you learn so much in your dnb degree because you study so much you obviously are going to get better skills and you are going to a better doctor as compared to the md ms of your peers the problem is that you always are in a scare that fear will actually not be uh, you not be able to flourish as much so it's better that you know these facts that i'm telling you dnb is a degree at par with md ms in all respects so this statement is my bottom line md ms is at par at dnb and dnb is at par at md ms if done in a good hospital or if done in a medical college so try to bit you know uh, avoid the very small hospitals offering md and uh, sorry uh, dnb degrees coming to the statement the statement of a dnb resident is as same as a md resident of your own state it is mandatory for that state to offer the md dnb resident the same same exact same statement that would be given to the state medical college that it means the cities just leave around the premier institutes that is the central institutes because they have a different pay scale altogether so don't look at that but it is mandatory for the government to do the same thing what else next i would talk about the foreign lands the foreign lands because they know that the dnb degree is offered by a central institute and the exam is done in a you know better way in a more organized way and is more you know systematically arranged they obviously will try to get more dnb residents compared to the md and ms but however if if you want to go out for for example uk or us you have to give the us mle or the plab exam there's no doubt about it so there's some exams which would be taken there you cannot just free walk in other other countries and you'll get admission there so if you are actually getting a dnb you again have a prior edge over the md and the ms residents if you are looking to practice the foreign lands so sir finally what do you say it before i move forward i'll just tell you one more thing this is from the nmc guidelines recent nmc guidelines which tells you the degree required to get a assistant professor job in the medical college previously it was thought that the dnb resident have to and have to and have to get one year of extra work done before they can apply for the assistant professor but three clauses here the clause number one is if a resident is doing a dnb or a dnb degree from a medical college offering a md ms also his degree is completely completely at par with the md ms resident you don't need to do anything extra for a resident this if you would read it here for a resident who are doing a m uh, dnb from a mc recognized but in a hospital without the academic uh, course running there of md and ms they have to get only one year just one year of post dnb uh, experience in a government uh, hospital, medical college 
for a resident who is getting a DNB from a non MC recognized, those are the ones who have to get two years of extra work before they can apply for a SN professor job. So don't generalize it that the, you have to go for the DNB for one year or two years. You have to know the clauses there. And I can tell you, so the bottom line, the bottom line is MD, MS is equivalently part as DNB. So my idea to you is if you're not getting a seat or a, you know, a, a, the, the subject of your choice in MD and MS, and you don't have that huge amount of money to spend on the private medical college, DNB is the preferred choice. In fact, I'll say it's a boon in disguise. It's a boon in disguise because the training is as well as DNB and MD. The new equipments is better than DNB and MD. The studies, if it all depends on who you are, right? So if you work better in a DNB course, you will not be at all repenting it. So take the preferred choice, do what you want to, and any choice that any thoughts that you have, put in the comment section below. Let me see how much I can again help you in the upcoming videos. Ensure that you make the right choice because that choice will be totally with you throughout your life. So make a good decision, make a sane decision. Do not go away what others say. Think about what you want in your life and do not look at what others are doing in their life. Wishing you all the best. I am Dr. Prabhupada Kaur Gupta. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Ensure that you like the video and let's discuss it again as to what are the best colleges for doing a DNB in the upcoming videos. Bye-bye.